G'day fans, and we're back talking about Star Trek Discovery. It's the sixth episode. Look at that. We're rolling through them. It's unbelievable how fast these things are coming and going. Almost halfway through the season already. <gasps> so it's uh, Dags and MPS here to discuss the episode with you to pick it apart and check bits out. It's MPS, mate. I've got to ask you straight off the bat. So what did you think of the episode, which is called Scavengers? Well, I thought it was uh, had some really good bits, mostly towards the end. Uh, but for the other parts, we'll uh, get through our discussion and talk about them piece by piece. Very good. The first thing I picked up on the very first, one of the first opening scenes is those robots again are still mucking around with the ship. It's like, what is it with these robots? They're just constantly there doing their thing. It's like, they just don't seem to ever go away. But as we discovered later on, the good old Discovery has been given a bit of a kick in the guts, as it were, and it's got brand new bits. It's got new lights and, and like removable nacelles and all this other stuff. And it's so cool. They stuck an extra letter at the end of the name. So there you go. Instead of being the uh, 1031, it's now the 1031A because that makes all the difference. A. Eh? So how <laughs> about that? In three weeks, it's amazing how much you can achieve in three. It's like I thought it's like the block version of Discovery's upgrade. It was that quick, that fast. I'll tell you what, that was damn impressive. What do you reckon? Well, if they had a lot of robots doing the work and, and no crappy handyman, then yeah, of course it'd get done properly and, and very fast. Uh, I didn't notice the A letter on it. Uh, I did notice that the nacelles come off and I thought, well, what's the point in ha- taking them off? If What was the point in actually having them in the first place? Look, I know they they powered by the, the warp coil and everything, but really now you take them off and the ship's going to look kind of crap. So yeah. it's going to look like it, it had, it's had like limbs taken off or something like that. So... I don't know. Well, they did say it aids with manoeuvrability and all the rest of it, but I must admit it does look pretty weird. It's just one extra bit that can break off, and at one point you can probably lose one in, in like a battle or something, and the ship will just be flying in circles. So that was quite funny. Um, the other thing too, of course, is that we got to see some new Federation uniforms, a few more greys, a few more extra people, which is kind of cool. And, of course, our dudes are now wearing special badges, which is kind of cool, but they're sticking with the blues. I thought, well, hang on, you can't go half ass either. You give them the whole lot, you don't give them anything. You can't just give them the badges and say, nah, stick with your old uniform. We've upgraded your ship, upgrade the crew uniforms as well. So clearly the costume budget said we cannot fit the entire cast out in these new grey things. So, uh, uh, which I thought would have been funny had they all gone to one piece uniforms, better Star Trek, the next generation of first and second season, but uh, they haven't done that. So the blues we stick with. Yeah, well, I like the new communicator badges. They seem to be multifunctional, multi-purpose and all that sort of stuff. And man, they must have a battery life like there's no tomorrow. You know, it's not like the current iPhones that last only like five hours. Um, but yeah, I also, teething problems with technology as it was, you know, you had, um, what was his name? Linus. Linus. Uh, yeah. Linus popping up everywhere, literally. <laughs> like, you know, first he's in the captain's chair, then he's in, uh, where was he in the second one? And then the third one, he... he rocks up in a very crucial romantic moment, which As, at the end I thought was very good because they continued on, unlike every other show in history where they go, oh, the, the moment's been spoiled and we're not going to kiss. And it's like, no, just yeah. kiss for crying out loud. So, And they did, and that was a good moment to see. It's funny because like the whole thing with the communicator is, is like it has the personal transporter, right? And Linus is the only one who's beaming around like the place. And you would think, because we see people in the elevators and like in the corridors, you would think, oh, I need to get to engineering. You just personally transport down there rather than walk. So uh, it is a bit of a corner cutting exercise. And you would think that you'd kind of abuse it and you'd want to go, oh, where can I go? It's like, oh, I can just check out here, check out there. I mean, people are like popping out all over the place. But yeah, the Linus sequences uh, were actually uh, kind of funny, which was uh, really, really cool. So we we're dealing with two stories on this particular episode. One was the rescue of Paul Booker from the prison. Uh, you know, the old prison break sort of scenario. Oh, what are the chances of getting the dude out? 100% is the answer to that question because they always are on these shows. <laughs> and, of course, we're dealing with the issue that uh, Michael is breaking the rules again and then upsetting a lot of people again. And uh, how are we dealing with that? So I don't know about you, but when... Um, uh, like we see Grudge appear on the view screen for the first time. This big furry thing walks over the camera. There's some really funny moments in this episode. And that was definitely one of them. I thought that, was, yeah. that worked out really well. I love the fact that Tilly's the only one that see, everyone sees this giant cat and all of a sudden Tilly goes Grudge and they all look at her like, what the hell do you know? You know, it's like, well, hang on a second. I know the cat. So, um, and then later on her and the cat are not being very friendly because the cat seems to be literally walking all over her. 
yeah. and then takes refuge under the bed and she goes, well, I hate you. So <laughs> she's not yeah. a cat fan by any means by the sounds of things. And I did like the fact that she actually said to Grudge, did you eat Michael? I thought that was actually very, very, very yeah, funny. That was, um, so the funny thing is, of yeah, exactly right. So the funny thing is they're looking for the black box of these of these ships to find out what happened in the burn, in the burn right? And it's like, the first thing I thought it was, oh, okay, ships still have black boxes as they were. You think they would have come under a different name by now because, you know, in real life, even though the box on an airplane is not black, it is actually a box. So, and as it turned out, the black box on a starship isn't a box at all. It's like a cylindrical, cylindrical thing, if I recall. So, um, mm. but the concept that they still exist is, is there. And a lot of people, a lot of fans are asking, well, why is Michael so fascinated with this whole thing about what happened with the burn? It was a hundred years ago. Get over it, build a bridge, move on. And, uh, and she's saying that you need to find this, the answer to this issue before the Federation can move on. And some people have thought, well, hang on, the Federation is still plodding along okay, and the universe is plodding along okay. It's not that critical. So it's certainly divided a lot of fan opinion. What do you reckon? Well, I, I don't know about the fan opinion, but it's just sort of brought a thought to me. The burn occurred for a reason by the sounds of things, and I got the feeling we're going to find a big bad somewhere down the line, You know, a, a mutual enemy that wanted the Federation destroyed for whatever reason. And the burn was just a way of, of doing it. Now, whether the enemy's still around or not is another story. But, you know, and I think today was the first time we, we heard the fact that she had two other black boxes. So this is like new information. Um, the fact that it's jumped three weeks in story time, that's fine. And, you know, but she had two black boxes from the whole year that she was there. And we never heard about that before. Mm. Uh, the interesting thing that I found was with the fact that all the ships blew up what they seemed as simultaneously, she's suggesting that they didn't. So it had to come from a source, oh, which makes perfect point. sense. Yeah. yeah. So someone's someone or something has created this. It wasn't just a natural phenomenon. I don't think so, but we'll find out soon enough. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, a few people have picked up on the fact that uh, they actually do like it when uh, when Michael's the centre point of a story, all attention seems to go to her and all the crew seem to be sort of forgotten, whereas if she's not around, then the rest of the crew and the cast get a lot more airtime. So it seems to be a bit of fan division as to whether Michael is actually a popular character or not. And, of course, the fact that she keeps breaking the rules and made Saru look pretty, pretty, pretty bad in the eyes of the Admiral doesn't really help matters. Now, to be fair, she was away for a year. Maybe her entire mindset has changed a bit. But... Um, it is funny that like at the start of the episode, well, a few episodes ago, she gets promoted the first, uh, the number one. And then she goes, climbs that ladder and then just pff, falls right off it. And of course, at the end of this episode, everything's been completely reversed. And you've got to wonder, well, you know, where are we going with all this? Um, but you can understand it from her point of view. Okay, yeah, Booker's in trouble. Got to go and rescue him and get to the prison planet and all the rest of it. And then, of course, you got the whole thing of, okay, this is yet another prison scenario. Everybody's like got the thing in the back of the neck. And, and you're just looking at all, thinking, all these things remind me of different movies. Like the big thing in the back of the neck just reminded me of the matrix. And mm. when you're running through the beam and your head blows off, I think that was either in a movie called fortress or the running man or something like that. Mm. And all these tropes are being borrowed from all these different um, science fiction elements. And, you know, the, you know, the, the prisoners are being treated badly and all the rest of it. The Andorian guy, Rin, he said his antennas cut off, right? Um, it was actually established in an enterprise that they grow back in six months. <laughs> What's the deal? Let's keep chopping them down every, every few weeks or something. So, yeah, I'm not too sure what the deal was with that, but uh, yes. And the Orions, of course, were back green dudes just doing what green dudes do. So, yeah. yeah. What do you think of all that? Well, maybe the fact that they, they recently cut them off, maybe that was a, a recent thing because he didn't seem very happy. It wasn't like people were just angry with him all the time. And even Book was angry with him to start with when he got the thing in the back of the neck. Yeah. But then by the, you know, 20 minutes later almost, you know, because it was only 43 minutes that they had to, to sort of rescue him. You know, he's going, I'll oh, come with us now. It's like, well, hang on a second. You, you've you just flipped over really quickly on this. You know, you could have forced him or whatever the case is. And then he saves his, uh, just, it seemed very um, convenient just to have this without enough sort of element of danger. Like even though guys having the, the, the blasters on their, their hands and everything were shooting, but no one was getting hit. It was like stormtrooper fest almost, yeah. you know, there was lots of firing, but no sort of hitting and the threat, to get onto a ship that we didn't even know that was ready for it as a transport. I thought they were getting onto to book ship. Yeah. Confused the entire thing. And then book ship transformed. Who we knew from, it could do that? It looks grass, what doesn't the, it? <laughs> what the hell was that all about? I was like, hang on. So book ships all of a sudden got new tech that can transform it from one shape to another. Cause I hate the original shape. It's, yeah. it's not symmetrical. And that really bugs me about ships in the, in the best of times. 
Uh, and then it transfers to this thing that has like firepower of a video game where you just it's like, come on, guys. That, that I just anyway. But the rescue seemed to to work well. There's only one casualty after all of that, you know. And uh, yeah, anyway, the uh, problem with things like that is unfortunately, and is one of those things that they are extremely predictable. Okay, and you may lose a couple of background dudes along the way when they're all running off and whatever else. But it's like you can foresee everything in advance, and mm. it's uh, in a, in hindsight you can look at it and say, "Oh, wouldn't it have been great if Booker book had been the one who got hit mm. and he and he carks it?" It's like, "Oh wow, we didn't see that one coming." And then of course you know what happens after that. But I mean, I must admit it was good that he came back into the show because you know when he's gone for a couple of episodes, you go, uh, "Is he actually going to return, or is he just like vanished?" Like you know, our poor old Federation guy from the first episode has just disappeared off the face of the earth, as it were. And um, uh, yes, yeah, so it, it was a little bit of a, a pretty convenient thing. And of course, the dude who was playing um, the Orion guy, the the nephew, it was like he was, it was like. Man, painting dudes green doesn't make them threatening or menacing at all. And if anything, it was interesting because I kept making making reference to um, uh, Osira. Uh, yeah. That's the second or third time we've heard uh, that name get mentioned. So if there's going to be a bad dude, or I think it's a female, actually, uh, it'd be good to see you saw, um, him slash her pop up at some point. Yeah. But uh, other than that, yeah, it was all a bit like, you know, typical, B, yeah, a bit of action, a bit of excitement, but very predictable at the same time. So. Yeah, it was. You know, it was good to see Philippa and Michael actually working together for once. You know, and I love this the bit right at the beginning when they're they're at, on Discovery. And she goes, um, "I've got this unsanctioned mission I need to do." And Philippa, she goes, "So you were in?" And she goes, "Yeah, you had me at unsanctioned mission." And I was like, "Yeah, that was just had some was- really good lines." It was almost like they were throwing in yep. comedy every chance they could, which yep. I think sort of didn't work in some parts but the lines were good uh in there so but yeah philippa was and then she had her issues on yeah. um book ship when she she went yeah. a little bit sort of yeah tropo for whatever reason yep. um and that could have all ended very badly for both of them but again you know at the end at the last second she gets up and she blows him away with a gun that she makes out of mixed parts <laughs> so you know one shot wonder yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing. There's a lot of things that are being introduced into these these episodes where there's obviously no resolution. Uh, so, yeah, Georgia has now apparently got an issue. Okay, oh, okay. so she's got some problems going on. Detmer, as we saw from the last episode, has still got a particular problem. That's not been addressed. And, of course, the music that we heard from the last episode that everybody was, like, losing their load over. It's like, oh, my God, there's, there's this tune. That hasn't been addressed either. So all these lists of questions of, like, well, okay, where are we going with this is starting to build up. So you'd like to think at some point there'll be a resolution for it. So the Giorgio thing just came out absolutely nowhere. So, uh, um, yeah, I think fans will be speculating for ages as to what exactly that could mean. Yeah, and I, the one thing I don't want to see is the last episode of Season 3 where they resolve all these things really quickly because it was all one factor or it was all one thing you know that guy with the glasses from last week's episode you know he caused mm. philippa's sort of you know headspace to go where it is um and he's the one playing the music for centuries or, and all that so I, it'd just be it's like the whole and that's the only problem with star trek the the issues are resolved in like you've got 43 minute episode and you've got 42 minutes of, of issues and then one minute and you fix the whole problem and everyone goes home happy yeah um so that was so that was the I don't know we call it the, the B story if you will okay the prison break yeah they, they go to the prison they come back and then you know, they get their little black box and everybody's happy book is saved yeah 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 and Grudge of course is still doing great what Grudge does so the A story is about the fact that from the Federation's point of view you know Saru and uh, all the rest of it he's got a, uh, a number one who keeps breaking the rules and, and nicking off and. Uh, there's a whole lot of character moments in the episode. And I think this is one of the strongest parts of the episode. There are two and one-on-one sort of discussions. You mentioned about the Giorgio and Michael uh, discussion, which was actually quite good. And of course, you got the scene with Saru and Tilly when Saru has to tell Tilly, oh yeah, Michael's done the bolt. And she goes, oh shit. That was really, really well done. That was really good. And I really like the idea that um, Tilly was actually saying that, yes, he does need to report what's happened to Vance Mm -hmm. rather than covering for Michael. And I thought that was a really interesting about face for her character. And that was a really, really, really good moment. And one of the strongest moments of the entire episode. And because normally, uh, as they even discussed, you know, he would say to her, well, normally you'd be supporting what Michael's doing. Um, and in this case, she's kind of not. And I thought that was really, really cool. What do you think? Yeah, that was a, a, I don't know if that's a character turning point for Tilly or not. Uh, but it sort of seems like, you know, Saru had to make a couple of hard calls on that episode. You know, had to demote, 
um, Michael for, for running off. But quite frankly, you know, she seems to, to have this thing for doing that all the time. Now, mm. we mentioned before that maybe it was the year that she had before that caused that. I don't think it is. It seems my interpretation of that is discovery prior to coming into the, the 31st century has been pretty much on their own. They can do what they want. You know, and they're just not used to those bounds anymore. And Michael mm. being with the Federation longer than she was on her own should still have that sense of, oh, there should be a turmoil at least. You know, she should be sort of walking, almost walking up to Saru going, look, I've got this thing I have to do. And him yeah. saying, no, then she goes off, not just her going off, yep. you know, like a you know teenager running out in the middle of the night sort of thing. So, yeah, then there was the other talk between Paul and... Um, Adira and I I don't know I, I I couldn't stomach that talk almost for the, for the sense that you got two very different characters in two very different things and they're trying to match up together you know a conversation and it just felt weird uh, I think you're being a bit harsh. I mean, you've got to remember Adira is still a new character. Uh, um, Paul is, is just relating to her situation about dealing with somebody who she was really connected with who passed away. Um, now, whether Paul believes that he she can physically still see grey or not is irrelevant, but Paul can at least relate to say, oh, yes, I was attached to somebody. I lost them and got them back. And uh, and, then, and I guess it was, just, it was just a nice little moment. And it's good that they do that in the show because otherwise you don't get to learn anything about anybody. So... Um, yeah, uh, I, I, that, no, I have no problem with that. So that's all yeah. right. I, and it was just too simple that all of a sudden, you know, he, he goes from in season one, you got the spores and he gets the, the yeah. implants on his arm. And the next thing you know, she just opens his, his thing and looks and goes, oh, I can get rid of those. It's like, yeah, where was that three, three weeks ago? That you know presents that? a very interesting problem because you think if she can fix that and up they do his upgrades and all the rest of it, then that means they definitely can introduce the spore drive on other ships. I mean, it's almost heading down that path. I mean, if they had looked at it and said, oh, no, we can't do anything, you, you, you're stuck with the implant in your arm and we can't do anything, fine. But they're now dicking around with it and moving things around and changing things. So it's like, yeah, this would be interesting. And if they do end up introducing the spore drive into all these other ships, well, then that completely opens the story in massive uh, ways that we just can't even begin to imagine. So, uh, yeah, it's a uh, very, very tentative sort of ground. So we'll have to wait and see, I guess, on that one. Then there was that section where they're all in, in that ready room with the jet, with the Admiral. And turns around and says, you've got this mission, you've got this mission. And the other one, he goes, oh, this is gonna, we'll see you in two months. And it's like, really? Send Discovery, make the episode far more tense by sending it out and then having to call him back while they're in the middle of dropping this stuff off. That would have been a far better thing rather than saying, no, no, you're, you're the special you know, people. We're going to just make you wait for 12 hours on the off chance that you know you couldn't just disappear and reappear in, in two. I just thought that was a a point that they could have actually had far more tension in the story. You know? mm, yep. No, that's fair enough. I mean, yeah, it is interesting when, you know, Saru says, Oh, look, we're ready to go at a moment's notice. He goes, nah, you just, you just chill out, dude. Well, we'll just keep you here. Cause you may have, you may have to go over here in the next 12 hours, get yourself ready. It's all good to go. And of course they don't get to go. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. Really? So, and the, and the ship's been sitting in dry dock for like three weeks all, all of a sudden, and, and you want to get out and do stuff. You know, you've got a crew that's learning bits and pieces of new tech. I did like some of the new tech, you know, when they're, they're sort of at the panels and nothing looks yeah. different, but you sort of touch it and it does all yeah. that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, i got to say for the concept people and those who are creating the show, the tech has become interesting mm. in, in sort of, you know, um, portable transporters and the new tech where you integrate with the actual ship sort of thing. That's, we haven't seen that sort of thing before mm. on, a, on a show. And I think that's, that's starting to get to that sort of era of technology and look you know who knows maybe in a thousand years time we'll actually have that tech ready to go all right look so overall i think the episode was pretty average uh, i felt so i'm i was actually kind of bored through it you know there were the funny moments but i was not that involved in it like i should have been you know there was not enough tension there was not enough sort of you know grabbing moments so oh i'm gonna give it a two and a half this week geez sink oh, the boots in mate oh golly wally yeah Jesus. That's yeah I, I maybe i need three weeks off and a, and a restructure and a some refit, robots. yeah and come back <laughs> with an extra letter at the end of your name or something um 
Uh, I uh, saw it a little bit differently, actually. I thought the whole prison scene was very predictable and a little bit, yeah, okay, don't, yeah, it was all well and good, but, you know, it could have been easier if just Booker just had it just turned up and said, oh, there he is, well done. Um, but I really liked the character moments. There was a number of them in this episode and uh, they worked, in my opinion, worked really, really well. I really enjoyed them. They were just, just nice sequences, right, even when, like, Paul and he were in the bed and having a good conversation and all the rest of it. So I found those to be, like, the strongest part of the entire story. And poor old Saru having to deal with his issue with Michael and having to demote her in the end. And uh, uh, it was handled really, really, really well. And I had a really, really strong points. Um, but, uh, yeah, as I said, the prison thing was a little bit too predictable. So um, I was tossing up between three and a half and four. And I'm going to go, well, I think the strong points outweigh the weak points. So I've gone with a four, uh, mainly because of those character moments. And it's very interesting to sort of see how things are building up. So, uh that's how uh, I came across uh, with it, and I uh, quite um, quite liked it. So, uh, and I must admit, whenever Grudge is on screen, he's just, he's just grouse. So. Yeah, <laughs> love your cat. Can't, so there you, you go. Can't help but love a furry critter. Can you? Indeed, exactly right. So uh, there you go. Anyway, <laughs> so. Uh, we've rated the episode, we've sussed it out, we're almost halfway through the season, it's very, very exciting stuff, So, but we've got to keep on surging on, we've got music to deal with, we've got burns to figure out, and of course Giorgio and, and Dem- uh, Demma, they've got problems of their own, so we'll have to hopefully get some resolution to that, but that won't be this week, that'll potentially be next week, Unification Part 3, I believe it's called, oh man, the fans are all excited, so we're going to buzz off now, get ready for that episode, and we'll see you this time and next week, so in the interim, make sure you keep on trekking, okay, bye for now. Oops, wrong finger. Ah.